Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Grant, I'm the host of Remington Graphics, and today I'm here with you guys to take a look at a bunch of really useful hotkeys for Blender. Now some of these I'm sure you will know, there are lots of really obvious ones that pretty much any experienced Blender user will know, but there are also ones that you may not know about. So let's go ahead and check some of them out. So we'll start off with Alt-B. When you press Alt-B, you're given this little selection tool and you can select a square area and all of your scene will be restricted solely to this area. And as you can see here, if we change the view, only this area is now rendered. And if we press Alt-B again, it deselects it. Now this is also great for looking at cross sections of models. So if I wanted to cut this in half, now you can see inside of the cube. But if we switch into rendered mode here, you'll notice that it's not actually apparent in the rendered view. So while we're in rendered view, let's go ahead and go over the Control B shortcut, and it'll give you that same selection tool, and if we select an area, it'll stop rendering everything outside of there and only focus on the area right here. And you'll notice if we move the camera, it stays with it as well, so it's only this portion of our screen is rendering, which helps speed up your viewport when you're in rendered view. In order to get rid of your render border over here, all you have to do is press Control alt b and it will vanish. And next we have Shift-B, which Shift-B will allow you to zoom into different portions of your model, which is especially useful trying to look at a certain detail. Um, and the smaller the box you make, the more, or the quicker you'll zoom in. So if I zoom out here and I make a box this big, you'll notice it barely zooms in, but if I make a box that big, it really zooms in. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some of our camera tricks. If we press Shift F, it gives us this little crosshair and we can look around with the mouse just like you would in a video game. You move with W, A, S, and D, or with the arrow keys. If you press Shift, you go fast, Alt, you go slow, E and Q make you go up and down. And there's a lot of other keys associated with this. They're all listed down on the bottom of the 3D view window when you're in the Shift F mode. Next up, we have a bunch of different hotkeys to work with Windows. So if we press Shift F4, we'll be switched into the Python console or the data view. If we press Shift F5, we'll be moved into our 3D view window. F6 into the IPO window. F7, the buttons or settings, or I don't even know what to call this properties window, except a lot bigger. F8 will be uh, put in the sequence editor, video sequence editor. The outliner is F10, oh I'm sorry, F9, and F10 is the image window, and F11 is the text window, and F12 is the action window. So I'm gonna press Shift F5 to go back, and if we press Shift in space, you can see it eliminates everything else on the screen and focuses on whatever window we're currently occupied in. So if I click on the timeline, press shift space, we'll be occupied with the timeline. And while we're on the topic of changing windows, if you press control and right or left arrow, you can change between all the different scenes up here. So instead of clicking, um, just going and clicking one, you can just press control and right arrow and you can scroll through them at your leisure. Now here's some really obvious ones. I'm just gonna go over them really quick because if there are viewers that are new to Blender and you'd like to learn the hotkeys, here they are. If you want to add an object to your scene, press Shift A instead of clicking Add in the lower left. If you want to scale an object, press S. If you want to move an object from left to right or anywhere, press G. And if you want to rotate an object, press R. These hotkeys can also be paired with X, Y, or Z, and then you can scale it or transform it in any of those three directions. So if I were to press S and then X, I will scale it across the X axis. If I were to press R and then Y, I will rotate it across the Y axis. And I were, if I were to press G and then Z, I will translate it across the Z axis. And these can all be undone with Control Z, and if for whatever reason we want to revert, we can press Control Alt Z, and we get a full history of all the different changes we've made. So if I wanted to go back, we could press, by the way, the eyeball signifies which one you're looking at right now. If I wanted to go back, we could click translate and all of a sudden our three transformations are back. And if I wanted to go back again, I press Control Alt Z and click resize. Also, if you're looking for a really quick way to render, if you press F12, it'll automatically start rendering for you and you don't have to worry about it. Or if you want to render an entire animation, you can press Control F12 and it will slowly but surely render the entire animation and output it to your output folder. Now let's go over some of Blender's selection tools. I'm gonna go into edit mode for this monkey head, however, you can do this in object mode as well with individual objects. If I wanna select a simple th or single vertice, it's simple, you just right click it. But say I wanted to select this eyeball. What I can do here is I can hold control and I can drag my mouse around to do a lasso selection of this eyeball. Now, of course, this is a very, very poorly done selection, but as you can see, it selected most of the vertices in the eyeball. In addition, if you want to select a square area or just like, a, I don't even know, half the model for whatever reason, what we can do is we can press B and we can just click and drag a bounding box all the way around our model. And something I've noticed helps is if you really want to select half of a model, you have to press Z to go into wireframe mode. Otherwise, these points back here won't get selected. So now if we 
use uh, the little bounding box selection tool here, you can see that now we have half of our model selected and if we wanted to, we could delete it. Oh no, I was working and I accidentally moved my 3D cursor and now whenever I create an object it just comes out in the wrong spot. There's a really simple solution to this. If you press shift and then S, there's a bunch of different options that we have here. If we select cursor to center, it will go back to the center. And say we had our cube right here and we want this in the center and it's all the way up here. We can press shift S and we can select, click selection to cursor or if we just want it on the grid, we could set it on the grid or you could send the cursor to this or you could send the cursor to the grid or the cursor to active, which I'm not sure what is an active item, maybe if it's selected. But anyway, if I select selection to cursor, you can see that our cube now gets moved, so its origin is in line with the cursor. Here's a cool trick that I just discovered on accident. If you want to apply a subdivision surface to something, press control and then any, sing any single number and that's how many subdivisions it'll have. So if I have one, it'll be one subdivision, two, three, four, but this works with any mesh as well. So if I were to add in another monkey over here and I press control one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth, just don't get too crazy with this. Otherwise your computer will lag a lot. Oh hey, well I just spent the past three and a half hours making this really awesome word that says text using Blender's text tools, but I really want to apply a modifier to it, and you can't apply a modifier to a text object in Blender. What you can do is you can press Alt-C, and it'll pull up this menu that allows you to convert it to either a curve or a mesh. In my case, I'm going to convert it to a mesh, and then from there we can add a modifier onto it. So if I wanted to add a solidify modifier, which is the wrong way of doing this, but I can do it, Voila! Now we have 3D text the wrong way, but you know, who cares because this is Blender and you're free in Blender to do whatever you want! I got a little bit too passionate there. Hopefully my parents don't yell at me for screaming. So if we were for some reason trying to create a rounded cube here without using any bezel modifiers, what we can do here is if we add a subdivision surface modifier to it really quick, press tab and press control R to do a loop cut, we can end up creating these really cool sort of, um, I don't really know what to describe them as, but they basically pushes it, um, all the different faces to a sharper point, and we can do this on all sides. And now let's say for whatever reason, like, oh crap, I put this one in the wrong spot, what we can do is we can press Alt and select one of the vertices, well I guess it's actually one of the lines would be a better option, and it'll select the entire, oops, did not mean to do that, it will select the entire loop cut, and now we can move the loop cut up and down, and this goes for all of them, so if I were to hold Alt and right click this one, now we can adjust this one. Now of course, this is a very, 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 very small amount of the actual hotkeys in Blender. If you want to look at a full list, you can come up to here and click File, User Preferences, and look at Input, and you have this giant list of organized hotkeys right here and unfortunately going over them all would literally take forever and I don't have that much time on my hands because I'm a student and stuff but anyway if you want to look at hotkeys you can look at them here you can also create your own hotkeys by pressing things so I think this was control alt w I hope it was but um, if I wanted it to be assigned to Q for example voila and now if I click restore it'll restore it obviously or if I just want to delete it all together I can um, it's up to you guys you can do whatever you want with your key Binds key key hotkeys. That's the word I'm looking for But anyway, if you guys know of another really useful hotkey leave it down in the comments below So other people can look at it and I can look at it too that way we can all improve our blender skills Anyway, thank you all so much for watching if you like this video Be sure to drop a like down below and if you just like the video go ahead and leave a dislike It tells me what you guys want and it's really really actually very helpful believe it or not Anyway, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Adios